Well, as often in, in these things, you look for something practical and relatively simple. And I take you back to my first point. If you can be in government without ever having to be agreed about anything, isn't that the first and fundamental flaw? So you correct it by making the passport to government being the need to agree. In other words, no party in this country is big enough to be a government on their own. There's always going to have to be a coalition. So a voluntary coalition of the willing is the obvious answer. Counterbalanced by what we don't have in Stormont, because mandatory coalition doesn't contemplate dissent, a fully functioning resourced opposition. So you have your election. Those who can agree after it what they're going to do about the economy, about education, about health. And if they can command the requisite majority, which might on some issues be a weighted majority, they form the government. Those who can't agree, they form the opposition, providing challenge, the thing that is primarily missing in Stormont, and the opportunity to people at the next election to change their government. There's nothing revolutionary about that. That is the system tested and tried across the world. And it's rooted in those fundamentals of the right to change your government and the right to vote a party out of government. The very things that mandatory coalition determines through its own DNA, that you'll never be allowed. And that, therefore, is the sensible and logical way to move forward if you're to have devolution. 